Hey, welcome to the Kingdoms Podcast. My name is Luke and I host this with my buddy, Matt Ma. And our goal is to empower you to discover how your faith impacts culture for God's kingdom. To do that, we're sitting down with different men and women from all kinds of disciplines to uncover how they, through their ambitions and vocational skill set, make a difference in the lives of those around them. And so if this is helpful to you, we'd love it if you could like it, share it, and subscribe. In the meantime, enjoy today's episode. Well, friends, thank you for being with us on the Kingdoms Podcast. I'm so thankful because today we're uh, with an incredible individual all the way from Australia, uh, Joel Abel. Joel, thank you so much. Hey, Luke, it's great to be with you on your podcast, mate. I've been excited about this. Oh, 100%. Me too. And and many of you may have heard uh, of Joel. He's he's done some incredible work in Australia uh, as a pastor uh, in just improving people's lives and sharing God's truth in, in beautiful ways. And we're we're going to dive into that. And so really just to just to jump right in, Joel, I want to ask, you know, you for for 20 years, uh, we're part of leadership at Hillsong Australia, um, a beautiful ministry there. People worldwide have been impacted by Hillsong. Uh, you've uh, stepped away from that to plant revitalized church uh, in in the Sydney area in Australia, and you've also uh, really immersed yourself in humanitarian work with Convoy of Hope. And so, I want to ask: those are are beautiful and significant experiences. How have those shaped the man that you are today? Wow, what a big question, Luke. Um, I think we've stepped away a few times from things. So before Hillsong, we used to run a church in a different denomination and we stepped away from that, handed that on. We were Hillsong for 20 years, like you said, stepped away, handed that on. Uh, even the church revitalized that we pioneered uh, mm-hmm. from scratch. There was nobody when we started. We, end of last year, handed that on. And so we've done that a few times now. And I think what we learn in each of those processes is that really life is a gift from God and mm-hmm. everything that we have is from God. And so that we should, through this life, hold things lightly and never be, never let anything become too precious. Because I feel like if God can, if he can steer us, he can direct us. If we're, if we're stuck in things, it's hard for God to navigate and, and direct our lives. And, you know, we commit our ways to him, but he directs our steps. And the best mm-hmm. way for God to direct our steps is to hold things lightly so what we've learned in these last few transitions is to know that whatever we do, we're to serve the Lord with gladness. And when you realize that everything we have is a gift from God and you hold it lightly, it can come, it can go, and God can put you in the most fascinating of places. So it's been a beautiful journey for us. That's, yeah. And I'm sure when you say fascinating of places, I'm sure you've got dozens of stories. We could probably fill up all kinds of episodes with that. But I, I want to, sure. it's, well, it's part of the adventure of following Jesus, right? Like who knows where yeah, it'll it take you. Yeah, that's right. So with that, Joel, kind of with that in mind though, you know, you're, as you mentioned, you're at, you're at Hillsong Australia, which is a globally known church. You're there for, for 20 years. You see the church growing church plants around the country. And, and in many ways, this has been a hugely successful ministry and you've had a really direct hand in that. Um, in the world's economy, it would make perfect sense just to kind of hunker down, stay there. This has worked. This is successful. It's familiar. It's safe. It's comfortable and just ride it out. Uh, but instead, you and your wife say, you know what? Uh, we're going to step into something new. We're going to launch this church plant. We're going to step out kind of into the unknown, away from familiarity and comfort and see what God would have us do. And so I, I'm intrigued to know, I mean, after 20 years, mm-hmm how did you how did you leave so much success behind was that intimidating and and what was god doing to really call you to say hey joel this is what's next embrace this that's good um not intimidating i I think you know when you've been around for a while hopefully you get to work through those feelings of intimidation and and they exist in every area look it's not uh it's not just getting to be part of something that's quite large and influential globally we have life lessons about intimidation every day of our life. So um, even being in in a role where it's it's the largest church in the history of Australia, even being in that role and being in certain rooms, I felt like every every part of my life journey has been dealing with battles of intimidation, whether you're 
with somebody who's just they're, they're a bit stronger or overhanded because probably they're insecure and you feel intimidated or um, you know, in every different level of leadership, I've felt the effects of intimidation, whether it's been even at school when I was a school kid, all the way through leadership journeys and transitions. And so I think leaving Hillsong, um, it, what you've got to do is start to realise the identity journey. And if what you're doing is the most important part of your life, is that what, if that's what defines you, then it's a trap. It's very difficult to leave things, especially things that are quite influential and quite successful globally in the eyes of others. But once you become a little bit more secure, um, you, you don't really have to be worried about the concerns of people or the thoughts of other people or what people think you should be doing because you've started to grow up a little bit. I'm in my 50s now and the intimidation tricks don't work like they used to when I was younger. So I'm realising I just want to please God. I want to serve him. And really this life is long and it's short. And in the brevity of life, um, we've had some incredible experiences and we thank God for those times and seasons at Hillsong, but it doesn't matter. We, while we were there, we said, it really doesn't matter the size of the mm -hmm. church. That's not mm -hmm. the issue. That's not the issue mm -hmm. to us. It's never been the thing. It's never defined us. Mm -hmm. So to be able to walk away from something like that has not been that difficult. And it's definitely not intimidating. Mm -hmm. Um, now I find myself in all kinds of situations and I love being in scenarios with people who, you know, I'm helping them to not be intimidated. And mm. so mm. I think intimidation all comes down to our personal journey of security mm. and identity in the yeah. Lord. And once yeah. you get that worked out, it's an easy journey. Yeah. I, I admire that because I, I respect that for many people, that's, that's a, a lesson you almost have to relearn every day of being able to say, you know, my identity is in Christ. I'm, I'm loved by God. And, and as you said, with, with open hands, whatever he would direct me into or take me towards, I'm, I'm available to him. So I appreciate, yeah. appreciate your testimony in that, Joel. Thank you. Look, one, there was one time, Luke, when um, we're in a large meeting, large gathering, and it, and it was actually us hosting um, church denominations from all over the world and they come to Sydney and it was a really big deal and I was in a guest lounge room I had a volunteer shirt on I was joining some of our college students who were volunteers and I was just serving in the lounge serving other pastors and handing out morning tea and things and this one particular pastor from a certain nation was bossing me around a little bit because I had a volunteer shirt on and um, someone went to say to them I don't you know they wanted to say who I was and I said, no, 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 just leave it. And, but, you know, I was watching the intimidation tricks that were going and these things happen in back rooms. They happen on stages. They happen in every corridor of life. What was sad was about 45 minutes later, I didn't have that volunteer shirt on. I had a different shirt on. And then I was up on stage mm. in front of that person. And so you just got to make sure that you be kind to everybody and mm. that you are gracious to everybody mm. and don't, don't fall for intimidation. Don't intimidate others mm. and just understand that we're, we're all got the same intrinsic value that God mm. puts on us. And it's the purchase of our lives through Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. And thank you for that story. That's a, uh... That would be a humbling way to learn a lesson <laughs> to be in that person's shoes, but so valuable. I, I wonder, Joel, to, um, to kind of jump in, in in a little bit of a new direction. Um, obviously, in, in your role, you've done a lot as a visionary, uh, even, even just to look at Revitalize. It's this vision of let's have a church plant starting from scratch. Uh, where would God take this? What could God do? What what do we need to be thinking of or dreaming of or doing uh, to see this come to life? And so uh, for a lot of young people who, who will be listening into this, uh, there's that question, you know, what what is God's vision for my life? How am I attentive uh, to what he wants to do in and through me? And so I want to ask in your experience from your, your study and also your ministry, uh, how do you see God giving vision? And, and how do you know that, you know, the dream of accomplishing something good in the world is, is from God? And, and, and then how do you act on that to carry that out? That is a wonderful question. Um, I think one of the, probably the most pertinent question that a lot of Christians ask is, what does God want me to do? Mm. Um, how do you know that what you're doing is good, I think, is what you ask. That, and, it, you know, the good thing that you do, how do you know that God is pleased with that? Yeah. I find that what I do is... Um, the scriptures are given to us to give us guardrails. So 
we we wait for God to speak and we want him to direct us by his spirit. But when he says nothing, we've got so much to go on. Mm. He's given us his word. So at the end of the day, if, if you're doing something good and you're wondering whether it's what God wants you to do or not, if it's good, it's obviously what God wants you to do. Mm. It's a no brainer. You know, we get so confused and filled with anxiety sometimes over situations and direction and God's will and vision and all these things. And I find if you just get active doing good things, God will direct you. It's not that hard. Ephesians actually says that God has created us with good works in mind before the foundations of the earth. So he's Mm. created us to be like Christ for good works. Mm. So if you're doing good works, you should never have to ask, is it what God wanted me to do? Just start Mm. doing it. I find if you start doing what you know, good things, God will shape you. The very first car that I ever purchased when I was a teenager uh, had this really big steering wheel, and there was no power steering back in those days. That's how old I am. And to try and turn it when you were stationary was so difficult. But if you had some motion down the road, you could drive it with one hand. Mm. And direction is a lot like that. If you sit and you wait for God to speak, often it's so hard to turn us. But if we just start moving with good works, God can just gently nudge us and you'll find that you'll be exactly where he wants you to be. Mm-hmm. The power of, of momentum by saying yes and taking action. That's a, that's a great illustration. You do not need permission to do something nice. Just do yeah. it. Yeah. And see what God does with it. Absolutely. I wonder, uh, Joel, I know uh, I've, I've first heard about you or, or learned about some of your work, I think, by watching a Spheres video. Uh, which maybe is a throwback to your time with with Hillsong, but um, you know this this concept of of how do we uh, represent Christ in every sphere of life, you know, recreation, family, mm. education, work, et cetera, et cetera, and and so obviously in in your ministry you're um, equipping people. You might have stay at home moms, you might have CEOs of businesses, you have students, you have athletes, you have musicians. This really diverse church family. And you're discipling these people, one person who maybe never has touched a musical instrument, and then one person who maybe teaches music for a living, right? Uh, Who are super diverse, but you're bringing them together to say, how can we find a common purpose in living out the gospel in in those spheres of life? And so I wonder, could you share some insights? Uh, How have you done that? And and what could that look like for us? How do we represent Christ in the various spheres of life we find ourselves in? The easiest answer to that question, Luke, is just to be Christ representative in your sphere. So wherever mm. you are, be Christ-like. Mm. You know, for many people, church is Sunday, mm. and it's what we do on a Sunday. And we come out of the world into church on Sunday. But really, church is just one aspect of the kingdom life. Mm. And the kingdom life is where we live every day of the week. So we are in all different spheres of life every day. And church should be the result of all of our activity midweek in our spheres. And then we all come to church to gather together and to worship the Lord and encourage one another. And then we go back out into our spheres. So when the Bible says, when Jesus said in the Bible, go into all the world, you know, in some translations, it's going to every nation, uh, preach the gospel to every nation, every tongue, every language group. And whilst that is primary, um, in many of our cities like Toronto, like a lot of the capital cities in Australia, the, the, lots of nationalities and tongues are actually in those cities. So when we go from the church building on Sunday to work on Monday, whether it's just as a stay-at-home dad or mum, we're in the community, we're walking kids to school, we're in the business world, the marketplace, we're in sports, entertainment, media, education, government, wherever we are, we are going into the world and there's usually lots of different languages and people have got lots of different cultures these days because of the way the geopolitical spaces work around the world. So we're actually effectively going into the world. So the light of Christ in me, as I Monday go into my world, like Mm. you guys are today, you go into the world and you be the representative of Christ in the world. And then we all, through those activities midweek, we bring everyone back together on Sunday and we worship God, we celebrate and look what God did all week. Mm. That's the power of spheres. Everyone works and lives in a sphere. We empower the spheres. We encourage the spheres. We talk about the spheres. We identify them so that you know which one you belong. We create gatherings in the spheres so that you can find your peeps, your people in your sphere. If you're a sports person, you want to mix with other sports people, with other advertising agencies and people, you you be in that sphere and you can encourage one another in that sphere and you bring Christ to that sphere. Yeah. 
Wow. So, so well said. You can tell you've done awesome teaching on that topic that, that you, you, as soon as you dive in, you know where you're going. Um, I, I wonder, Joel, you know, in the midst of that, we've talked about uh, a lot of your ministry, some of your teaching, discipleship, vision casting, and you've been a, a part of, of a lot and a lot of good things. And in the midst of all that, for many people, uh, the challenge is, uh, how, how do I care for my own soul? How do I continue to go deep with God spiritually? How do I prioritize my personal walk and, and wellness? And so what are some of the ways you fostered soul care uh, in your own life? Um, honesty. You, you, you've got to be honest with yourself. And that, mm. that's a difficult thing for all of us to do. But we, we need to learn to become honest with ourselves and honest with the Lord and let the Lord really speak into us. You know, discipleship is this constant journey of moving towards Jesus. It's progress towards Jesus, um, not just growth, but progress um, and becoming more like him. I think, sadly, you know, in our churches around the world today, especially in some of our westernized cultures of church it's become more about attendance and belonging and some of the activities um, and progress is not really a key metric that we look at but it's really really important because we've got this whole life to become more and more like christ so self-care is allowing the spirit of god slowing down long enough to allow the spirit of god to whisper things to us i'm sure anyone watching this podcast today luke if if you can cast your mind back to when you first surrendered your life to Jesus, when you first became a Christian, there was a lot of intricate, small, little things that God would always whisper about, or you'd be reading a Bible passage and it would jump out and it would confront you. And sadly, that stops for a lot of people after a couple of years. Mm. The bullshit is the fact that that process keeps happening, that that never stops, because God is this perfect eternal being and he's made us in his image and so we broke that image so now we are being redeemed and restored into that image so we are to become more and more like him so self-care is maybe it's just knowing that god is adjusting me still today when did he last adjust me when did he last speak to me because if those things aren't still happening we're not caring for ourselves fascinating scripture the greatest commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. We think it goes God, others, self, because it love God, love others as you love yourself. But you love others as you love yourself. So it's really, if you can't love yourself, mm. well, the extent to which you love yourself will be the extent which you love others. Mm. So one of the greatest self-care questions is going to be, if I'm frustrated with other people, there's something wrong with me. Mm. because love doesn't get these things wrong. So if love does not take offense and I'm offended mm. at someone else, which means the loving journey is struggling for me, which means I need some self-care. There mm. are thousands of examples every day, frustrations, irritations, uh, all the areas where we fail in the fruit of the spirit, they're all indicators that we need to get back into self-care. And all you need to do is just say, God, what's wrong with me? Why am I so frustrated? Why am I so annoyed? Why did I lose it then? Why was I impatient? Why is that fruit of endurance or long-suffering? Or what are the, Why are those not as available as they should be? That's a self-care issue. And God wants to be with you and help you in that. Yeah, well said, well said. I know we, we touched on this earlier, Joel, but you, um, you know, you're working uh, with, with Convoy of Hope, which does so much. Uh, to care for people, not just in Australia, but but around the world uh, who are in need. And yeah. I just, I would love to take a minute to, to really mine your insights on, on how we become a people um, who live in really practical ways to live out the love of God, who live to demonstrate compassion, and, and through that have an impact in our communities. And I, you may have heard something like this, I, I think probably some pastor at some point in their ministry career probably says a quote along the lines of, you know, suffering reveals uh, who we are and what we love um, or something along those lines, you know, suffering, it reveals who we are and, and what we love. And so I wonder um, in your journey, how has suffering and difficulty shaped your life and faith? And also out of that, uh, what are some of the best ways you've discovered as a follower of Jesus uh, that you can respond to those who are suffering or, or in need? Wow, that's a big question, Luke. Um, some of the things, how do I break that down? I mean, big picture suffering happens to us either because we are 
maybe silly or, you know, it's our, un, our unwise, foolish ways of doing things. James says sometimes that can happen to us and we should just really work on that and repent. Other times suffering happens to us because others have been um, evil toward us and then we've got to make sure that we are responding to that in the right way and that's when we rejoice in those types of things. But what suffering does is reveals what's in us, yeah. reveals the maturity within us. It reveals... Um, what God's really, you know, the depth of Christ in us. So um, I've been reading a little bit lately about the love of God and the awesome, powerful, fierce love of God and that, um, you, you know, that the holiness of God in some of my devotions has been likened to the sun. It's unique. It's um, powerful. And as you get close to it, it gives you warmth. But if you get too close to it, it's dangerous because it can destroy us. So, the thing about the sun is knowing the, the intensity of it because it's meant to create warmth, but in others it can create danger. And it's the same thing with compassion. It reveals how close we're getting to God. And as we get close to him, suffering will help us to become like him or it drives us far from him. And we've got to decide when the things that happen to us you know, when bad things happen to good people, good things happen to bad people, when the suffering that happens to us, that should point us to God and we come closer to him. And as we come closer to him, things burn off us and we become more like him. That's what becomes, I think, it's the opportunity to become more Christ-like. Yeah, yeah. And out of that, have you? do you ever find yourself saying like, wow, I've because I've gone through A, I also know how to respond to this person who themselves is going through a, um, have you ever had that experience or moments in your life? Yeah. I mean, that's empathy, isn't it? You, mm. you, you, you gain the experience because of what you've been through. We've been through some things in the last few years that you wouldn't wish on your worst enemies. And because of that, it's helped us to understand other people that have gone through things. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I think at the end of that, after the suffering, it, what it produces in us is this beauty of understanding and empathy mm -hmm. to be able to relate to others and come alongside others that we never would have been able to do that in the past. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how much, I mean, I'm, I still have a lot less life experience than you, but it's, it's amazing how much compassion and, and empathy uh, can carry you when it comes to being the hands and feet of Jesus. Uh, and yeah, yeah uh, it's amazing how much suffering can make like deposits, if you will, of compassion in you of, of deepening that in your life. So yeah, thank you for yeah, that. I think, well, I think we, we need to, we need to be able to embrace suffering. We need mm. to bring it close, hold it. You know, the, mm. one of the greatest ways to deal with suffering mm. is by embracing it, is by yeah. bringing it close and allowing the Lord to be there with you in the middle of it. There are things, for instance, um, God being Jehovah Rapha, the Lord mm. who heals us. If yeah. you've never been sick, we'll never know him as healer. Mm. We know that he might have healed someone else. But when I've been sick and God has healed me, I have a closeness with him that I, is different. It's deeper because now he is also healer, not just savior. Right. Wow. Well said. Well said. Um, I was, you know, I was I've taken in some of your messages from time to time, Joel, and I was uh, watching one of your sermons from, I think, 2019 when you were uh, in, I think it was Arkansas, uh, teaching at a church. Ah. And there, there was a quote that you shared that, that, uh, that stood out to me that kind of really applies into this whole discussion of, of how we can be a people who live with compassion and have impact on our communities. And uh, one of the things you said in the message was, uh, we want to know God in a real way so that we can reveal him in a real way to our neighbors and our community. And so we would love to ask what would be some of your best insights for one encountering God in that real, like set your heart on fire way uh, that then empowers you to bring the transformative love of Jesus to, to your neighbors, your schools, your workplace, to be people who the way you live, people are saying, wow, this is what Jesus looks like. I think, I think people want to see that this works, Luke. Mm, I don't think yeah. they want to see it. It's not about being polished. It's not about looking better you know one of the crazy things that happens many times is that we put in our sunday best and go to church and then we come home and our family sees us differently and our neighbors see us differently people just want to see that this works mm -hmm. this actually makes sense and yeah i just it shouldn't be that difficult i think just letting god get a hold of my life and make it real for me in every situation 
shows that for other people, this, this is real. Like God is real. If you just hang out with me and watch for a little while, you'll see that I go through bad days and things happen that I wasn't planned for, but it's how I react to all these things. And I think that's the best demonstration of God's love and power working in our lives that it just, you know, the day didn't turn out the way I was hoping it was going to be, but, but God is with me. God is here. He's near. Yeah, beautiful. Well said. Well, Joel, it's it's close to, to land the plane on our time together, and it's been sweet to, to interact with you. Any anything that we've discussed that you want to share? Any any closing thoughts or words of wisdom or encouragement with those who might be listening in? I would just say walk closer and closer towards God. If you're listening to this podcast today and you've got faith questions, you're in you know you you're intrigued, but you're not there yet. Um, God is always close. He's always there. And don't try and copy someone else. Don't get put off by someone else. What I'd want to say to you um, is if you are in a church or you've been hurt by a church and you're just not sure what you should do about that, never think that the church has hurt you. It's just people inside church that hurt us. It's not It's not the church. The church is the body of Jesus. And so walk towards God and the, the trueness of who God is and learn to love his body, the church, because in the church, there is both weeds and there's wheat. There is both people who are following God and people who are on a journey. And we're all part of that work in progress, but don't throw out everything just because somebody gives you a hard time. Follow God. The Bible says, if you search for him with all of your heart, you'll find him. You really will. And so don't get turned off by people. Just walk towards him and you'll, you'll, you'll find him in a real way. Well, amen to that. Thank you, Joel. For for people who are listening in and they would love to hear more about you, to learn about some of the work you've been a part of, maybe to, to discover you on some of your online platforms, uh, how can they learn yeah. more about you? Yeah, well, um, I'm on some of the social places like most people. It's uh, easy. It's just Joel Abel, all one word, J-O-E-L-A-B-E-L-L. -L. Um, and we, my wife and I created this thing called the Slow Network, which is really... It's slo network.com, slow network, not slow, but it is about slowing you down. But it's slo because it's spirit led opportunities. Mm. And we want to slow people down just enough so that they can keep in step with God. We find that people rush ahead mm. and God is really wanting to be involved in our lives. So you can jump onto the slow network if you want, but um, convoyofhope.org.au in Australia, uh, convoyofhope.org, global US. And Anything we can do to help you, yeah, ask questions, jump in, but keep following Luke and what's happening on the Kingdoms podcast because there's some great discussions. You ask good questions, Luke. You really do. And Thank it's been a pleasure to be part of it today. Oh, thanks, Joel. It's, well, it's a gift to have this time with you and to, to learn from you. So we want to make the most of it. So thank you so much for, for carving out time in your week to, to share in this conversation today. My pleasure.